I've got a confession to make. I'm no fool. Oh, wait, not that one. My favorite program to make tutorials with actually isn't OBS Studio. It's Camtasia, a screen capture program that I've used since the early 2000s. I may even have an old box copy lying around somewhere from back in the day. It has awesome features like easy zooming in and out on your cursor, cursor highlighting, cursor ripple effects, and so on. However, I rarely actually use Camtasia to make my videos due to the limited quality options, control, and audio capabilities. I'm, I'm used to, you know, getting the best. Well, good news. If you want to make tutorials, you can do a lot of that live within OBS rather than spending hours recreating it and editing like I do. Doing it this way instead of during the edit is also advantageous because you can then still use overlays like frames or face cams without needing to record them separately to zoom in on your desktop and have to like crop them out or something. This video is an excerpt from one of the later chapters of my OBS Definitive Guide course. If you are confused what's going on, if you want the best resource to get up and running with OBS Studio to go from any starting point of knowledge to being a master of it, my OBS Definitive Guide course is the way to go. We are running a discount here, which is why I wanted to get this clip uploaded. You can use coupon code SPRING to save 50% off of it at glitch.mob slash OBS linked below. For this, we'll need a display capture scene set up with show cursor enabled and two OBS Python scripts. Python scripts work a little differently than the normal Lua scripts in OBS, and you'll have to actually you'll actually need to download and install Python here with OBS closed before we launch OBS and do any of this. Make sure you download Python before doing any of this. You need specifically Python 3.10, not 3.11. You gotta go down to the April downloads to actually get an installer for it. That is what we will need here for these scripts. Go ahead and install Python, choosing Add to Path in the options, and let it do its thing. Then relaunch your OBS installation. After installing Python, use the Windows key plus R to run and type CMD. In the command prompt, run python-m pip install pyinput, as it shows on screen. If this gives you an error about not recognizing the command, try doing python3-m pip install pyinput. Then do the same thing, but for pywinctl. After these install, download those two scripts that I linked and launch OBS. I recommend keeping a general stream files folder in your user folder in Windows, and then a script subfolder in that folder. I like keeping these fixed purpose folders in my user folder, so it's easy to back up and keep syndicated and synced across multiple PCs or multiple Windows reinstalls, whatever you need to do without hassle or downtime. Zooming in on small details is super helpful for tutorials, especially if you have a high resolution or ultra wide monitor where things can be pretty hard to see for the viewer. Go to Tools, Scripts, click to the Python Settings tab, browse to your Python install directory, which is probably going to look like mine rather than like the program files. Then go back to the Scripts tab and add a new script. Choose the Zoom and Follow script, should be a .py file. Now you'll need to set up hotkeys for zooming in on the mouse and following the mouse. These are independent functions, but you can map them to be the same thing or set them up with matching hotkeys or whatever, or a combo macro button on a stream deck, that kind of thing, because most of the time you probably want it to do the same thing. In the script settings, choose the source that you want to zoom into. This would normally be your display capture source, but it could be a game source if you wanted to do a cool like zoom in effect when you're sniping or something weird. Here, you also change the size of your zoom window. Set stretch to inner bounds, and now you're ready to rock. You can make copies of the .py file, probably with different names, and add them as multiple scripts in OBS if you want to do this for multiple sources, for, you know, if you had multiple monitors going or something like that. One of the other tutorial focus features of Camtasia is the ability to highlight your cursor to draw attention to it. I tend to make extra large cursors in Windows with high contrast colors, specifically to help make it stand out from my you know, windows and things like that, but this doesn't always work. There are two options I recommend for doing this here. One is my preferred way, the other way is just eh. 
The first is separate from OBS, the program Mouse Pointer Highlight in the Microsoft Store. This has a basic customizable highlight circle around your cursor, and it's picked up in OBS's display capture source. About as simple as it gets. The second is the OBS Studio Mouse Cursor Skin script. This is another Python script. This one uses the Pi input module we installed earlier and requires you to duplicate your display capture source, set a tiny crop on it to something like 64 by 64, something that's just like based on your cursor, and then choose update crop for it to follow your cursor, and then choose a transparency image of your source that basically just moves around the source with your cursor. As a solution, this is honestly pretty jank, if not incredibly clever, and it won't support multiple monitors or even probably certain resolutions or aspect ratios. But it's an option. Something to also consider if you're making screen capture tutorials is the scaling quality of your text and small sources. First and foremost, if you're at 1440p or higher resolution for your computer desktop, use higher scaling percentages in Windows. Settings, display, scale. 150% for 1440p is usually better, and 200% for 4K is usually better. Even if you don't use these higher scaling factors for your daily usage, turning it up before you open OBS will render your programs, Windows UI, and text at a higher, cleaner size that makes things significantly easier to see in your screen captures. And cleaner in presentation. Some edge case programs may be unaffected by this change or even look worse afterwards. If so, sure, just don't use the higher scaling percentage or do the override setting in your compatibility menu. But most programs these days are built for higher DPI displays like this, and it will work fine. Next, we have to preserve the quality of your text and other elements when scaling and compressing your actual footage. While the zoom and follow script we show here will scale losslessly within OBS, if you plan on upscaling or doing any additional punch-ins, zooming in during editing, you might quickly discover that your text and fine lines and those kinds of things end up looking quite blurry. There's a couple things you can do about this. The higher DPI scaling setting in Windows absolutely helps keep things cleaner and rendered brighter, bigger, not brighter, in the first place, and potentially keeps you from needing to zoom in as much during your editing or capture in the first place. But you're also being held back by something called chroma subsampling. Chroma subsampling is a normal part of video processing that compresses the color of an image. Chroma subsampling compresses the color information without compressing the sharpness or brightness information of an image. Imagine you're painting a picture. You have two types of colors, brightness, luminance, and color, chrominance. You need more brightness details to create a sharp image, but you don't need as much color information. Chroma subsampling is a way to reduce the amount of color data in a video without losing too much overall quality. Chroma subsampling uses a ratio to represent how much color information is kept. You'll often see ratios like 420, 422, and 444. These, the first number represents the amount of brightness data, and the other two numbers represent the amount of color data, horizontally and vertically. Let's break down the common 420 ratio. Four parts brightness data, two parts color data horizontally, zero parts color data vertically. This means that for every four pixels, we keep two pixels worth of color data horizontally and don't add any extra vertically. This saves space and still provides decent color quality. So chroma subsampling is all about balancing quality and file size in image compression and video streaming. It reduces color data while keeping brightness data so we can enjoy smooth, high quality videos without using too much bandwidth. Basically every video you encounter in the wild, YouTube videos, Netflix streams, Blu-rays, etc., are all presented in 420 color space. It's fine, because the final delivery, that extra information, it won't be useful for. But when you record in OBS Studio, capture is just the first step of processing that your video goes through. You still usually have to edit your video, apply effects, compress it again to export, and then upload it to YouTube to be compressed again. Keeping a higher chroma subsampling level as far into the chain of events as you can helps keep these smaller details preserved as much as possible. For streaming, you have to keep OBS in the NV12 or i420 color spaces, with NV12 being most widely supported in the default, as streaming sites don't support anything higher. But for recording, you could use the i444 color space to achieve 444 lossless chroma subsampling. This is supported in the software CPU encoder X264 and the Intel and NVIDIA GPU encoders. AMD's encoder will let you use it, but it can only produce 420 color in the end, so there's no real point. The downside is that it's much more difficult to encode 444. I showed my crazy 444 HEVC encoding profile that I used for screen captures in one of the videos earlier in the course. 
But here's a quick glance at those settings again. This works for screen captures on RTX 20 and 30 series cards, but I can only keep up with fast-paced camera and gaming encodings with these settings on the RTX 40 series cards, at least at 4K. A workaround for this is to upscale your video past your native resolution within OBS, since OBS will be scaling your sources losslessly. If your screen is 1080p, set OBS to record in 4K, still in NV12, and scale your display capture source to fit, or just set a scaled resolution of 4K using the area scaling factor instead of by cubic. Area is closer to nearest neighbor that provides a better result. I tend to recommend using bicubic for camera and action-based sources as a scaling factor, but area is a much better choice for screen captures. It uses nearest neighbor scaling as, a, as close as it can get to an even percentage interval, which is the best pixel preserving option for UI elements and text, and then interpolates the rest of the way should you be at a non you know, even scale. This will result in the cleanest possible feed. From there, I recommend using DaVinci Resolve to edit where you can specify the nearest neighbor scaling algorithm, where Premiere's scaling algorithm is blurry and just destroys the footage. If you need to stick with Adobe Premiere, you could bounce the video through Adobe After Effects to be scaled in their way and then set it to, I believe, draft quality uses nearest neighbor. Uh, that's a lot slower to render and a lot more complicated to do for every video. With all of this, you'll be producing the cleanest possible tutorials in no time. Thank you so much for watching this video and for your support on all of these OBS guides over the past, we're approaching 11 years now, I think we are at. It means the world to me. Again, if again, if you want more guidance, if you want more direct resources on how to really master OBS from any starting point of knowledge, glitch.mov slash OBS is my definitive guide course. It is the absolute best course on OBS available on the planet. And you can save 50% with coupon code SPRING at checkout. glitch.mov slash OBS. Thanks.